Hello and welcome to this lecture. In this lecture we're going to install Zen Framework 2. Now I'm currently on a MacBook, so I will show you how to install it on OS X. But the approach is very similar on Windows or Linux or whichever platform you're on. So you shouldn't have big problems adapting this approach to your particular needs. So the first thing we'll do is we'll make a slight change to our host file, which can be found at slash etc slash hosts. What we'll do is we'll add a domain name and we'll point it to our local machine here, such that when we request, in this case, zf2.com, the request will actually be mapped to our own computer and not go on the internet on the actual zf2.com. I'm making this edit with the VI editor, but you can use any text editor that you would like. So please don't be intimidated by this if you're not familiar with this. Next, we have to set up a virtual host. So I'll go in the finder and I'll go in the conf directory. I'm using MAMP for easy setup. If you're using your own installation, it's absolutely no problem. You should be fine with configuring it the same way as I am now. So we'll go in the Apache folder and actually we have to make a slight change to this httpd.conf file. We have to find this section and by default this line is commented out so it was actually looking like this before. So what you have to do is remove the comment such that this line is included. This will basically just include an additional configuration file for our virtual hosts. So make sure that it's not commented out and save this file. Once this is done, we can go back. And if we go in the extra directory, we find a file named httpd-vhosts.conf. And this is where our virtual hosts are available. I'm gonna just comment in the virtual hosts that we need and I'll just talk briefly about it. So here I add a default virtual host which is basically just pointing to the main folder of our web applications and I make this accessible by localhost. Then I add a virtual host here that's specific to this Send Framework 2 course and I set the server name to zf2.com so that it matches the name that we defined in our host file. And here I set the document root to wherever I would like to place this course. And it's important that we, uh, that we add the slash public suffix to this path because actually we want requests to invoke a script called index.php within this public directory. And the same is defined here in the directory tag. And we say that we want the index.php to be invoked as the, the index file. And the rest of this is not super important to understand. It's basically just setting some permissions and allowing URLs to be rewritten so we can get pretty URLs in our application. So save this. And if you have any web server running, make sure that you restart it. So let's go back to the terminal. Let's uh, navigate to the folder where we want our product to reside. So in my case, it's in my home folder slash Dropbox slash dev. And I made, I made a directory called zf2 course. Let's see, and this is currently empty. Now let's make our public directory that we refer to within our virtual host configuration. So request will point to a file named index.php within this public directory. So let's just create one for testing to see if our setup works. So we'll just echo hello world here and we'll save this file. 
So let's go into our browser and check if this setup is working as it should be. So let's go to setf2.com. And as you can see, hello world is printed. So this just verified that our setup worked. So now I'll just clean up our test files and I'll remove the public folder. Be aware that using this command is very risky. So only do this if you really know what you're doing. Otherwise, you can delete these directories in your finder. So now I'm going to show you something called send skeleton application. And this is basically just as the name implies, a skeleton application, which does a lot of setup and configuration for us. So we don't have to, to deal with many things. If you scroll down, you will find the installation instructions here, how to install it. So actually we're just going to follow this advice. So let's copy this line and go back into our terminal. And let's make sure that we're at the root of our project directory. And let's just run this command. So now we have downloaded the send skeleton application and we have extracted the tarball's uh, contents. So now we have to use Composer in order to install Zen Framework 2. Again, we use curl to download Composer, get composer.org slash installer. And we pipe this to PHP. So let's do this. And as we can see, Composer has successfully been installed to the directory, which we can verify here. We have composer.far available. So now I'll just show you the contents of composer.json, which defines our dependencies for this project. As you can see here, actually the only dependencies we have in this project are PHP itself and Zen Framework 2.5 or greater. What's interesting here is that the Zen Framework project currently now itself defines on each of the components included in Zen Framework 2. So if you check Send frameworks composer.json file, you will see that it requires send slash authentication, send slash HTTP, and so on. So basically, send framework slash send framework is just orchestrating all of the components in send framework. So let's resolve these dependencies and install send framework. We do this by using sudo php composer.far and we pass it the install command. This tells composer to resolve these dependencies and install them. So as you can see here, a lot of dependencies are installed and it's going very fast for me because I have it, them cached. It might not go as fast for you if you haven't done this already before. So now we should be able to see Send Framework working if we go back to our browser and go to setf2.com. Success! As you can see, Send Framework has now been installed correctly and successfully. And this is the starting point that we need. So from now on, we'll start to expand and build onto this application. So, Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next lecture.